that only the real Becky could answer. Oh, yes, okay, so that's the first thing Becky always says when she sees us. Oh, yes. Easy. Usually I'm like, hey girl, hey. No, I say, sorry I didn't bring anything to this party. Where is the closest bathroom? I might have to take a nervous poop later. Yeah, that's her. That's it. This is a nightmare. Speaking of nightmares, I forgot my purse at home. Can you guys buy me lunch? Oh, that's a classic Becky move. Absolutely. That's not a classic Becky move. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm late, babe. I was stuck in traffic. You were such a great lay last night. Uh, 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 Becky? Uh, Becky? Uh, okay, I had crazy sex with one of you last night, but I can't tell which one it was. It was not me. He cut, cut, cut came in my mouth last night. Uh, you were so present. And so sensual. It was the best sex of my life. You were fucking a robot, Carl. Listen, Carl, one of these women is an expert copy of our best friend Becky, and I have no idea which one to shoot right now. Oh. Don't shoot! My career is just about to take off. You don't have to shoot either one of us. There can only be one Becky! I have to choose. Do you guys really see me as a robot? Well, you could be more uh, emotionally available to us, yeah. <laughs> Forget it. Impersonating Becky is not worth all this hassle. I need to learn to love the real me. Goodbye, losers. <laughs> you know, I thought having a roommate that was a robot would be cool, but she was a straight up bitch. <laughs> I'm still so confused. <laughs> hey, does anybody know if that other Becky is single? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Murray Artie Cup, and possibly final chef. So more time around town, we want to squeeze in every single thing we've ever wanted to do. Because tonight we're still Murray Artie. And you know what? Murray Artie makes dreams come true. Yeah! We make dreams come true, everyone. Take my castmate, James. James, wonderful James. You see his headshot right there. Did you know that James can do amazing impressions of white celebrities eating ice cream? <laughs> no, you didn't know that because we were never able to work it into a sketch. But tonight, Moriarty makes dreams come true. So, James, get on up here. Take it away, James. Woo! What's the deal with French vanilla? It's not French! Oh boy. I did not have sexual relations with this ice cream. Oh, get down! I got this ice cream out of the freezer! I played Mr. Freeze! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my client is a horrible human being. <laughs> <laughs> he
He's a low life. A pitiful excuse for a man. A sad, desperate piece of trash in constant search of attention. But, is he guilty? Uh, yes. <laughs> All evidence points to yes. He was seen at the scene of the crime by multiple witnesses. The DNA on the murder weapon matches his very own. He left a note on his mother's fridge that says, and I quote, I am going to murder three little girls today. <laughs> but did he really do it? <laughs> I believe he did, and so does everybody else here, but let's take a look at some facts, okay? <laughs> My client runs a blog called Humans of New York I Would Like to Murder. <laughs> My client has been caught masturbating on the subway to domestic abuse advertisements more than once! My client was in the nudo! Does that make him a murderer? <laughs> no. What makes him a murderer are the selfies he took right after he killed those girls. Is he a monster? Yeah, <laughs> he is. Should he burn in hell for his crime? Of course. <laughs> but what if? What if the girls were completely unharmed by his AK-47 blasts? <laughs> Would that still be considered murder? No, you idiots! <laughs> of course not! <laughs> but that didn't happen because according to the forensics report, he didn't miss one single bullet. <laughs> so in closing, is my client, Max All Caps Brand, a sad, perverted, twisted, shitty, deplorable excuse of a human being who murdered a group of teenage girls in a horrendous act of unmerciful aggression? And should he be given the highest sentence for his crime? I say no! <laughs> if you live in opposite world, because yes, he's completely guilty. Thank you very much, I get paid by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you are the director of the Seconds of the Little cannibals. <laughs> Just because you swore off human flesh doesn't mean that you can't make a delicious meal for whatever is left of your family. <laughs> I'm your host, Charles Bees, and as always, I'd like to thank the Toronto Department of Corrections and the Cooking Channel for allowing me this opportunity. <laughs> Today we'll be cooking a favorite dish of mine, spaghetti and meatballs. The first time I made meatballs was with my mother. But today, we'll be substituting her with some veal and ground soda. I also got a taste for Italian living in Florence, but I've since apologized to the Italian people and learned my lesson. To start, we're going to add carrots, celery, and substitute the lining of a freshly kidnapped boy <laughs> with onions. <laughs> now, we're going to allow that to simmer a little bit. And while that's simmering, we're going to start the meatballs. Oh, yes. First, it's important to not allow the meatballs to dry out. So, 
it puts the oil on the meat. <laughs> it does this whenever it is told. <laughs> You want to add breadcrumbs and fava beans. And uh, I like to add a little cheese for taste. Oh, God, I cut myself. <laughs> oh. oh, that sweet, sweet nectar. <laughs> well, normally we'd allow the meatballs to marinate for a while, but uh, I have some meatballs that have already marinated. Oh! <laughs> How'd that get in there? <laughs> Don't throw that away, buddy! I want that leg. I mean, <laughs> meatballs. Meatballs. <laughs> we have some here. For this next step, though, I'm going to need a special guest. My correctional officer, Steve Kilgore. Please welcome Steve Hey, Kilgore. how are you? Thanks. Hi, Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yes, welcome, Steve. For this next step, uh, we're going to need to turn on the burner, okay? Because we're going to lightly sear the meatballs. You got it. Great. Here we go. Ah! Oh, no! Oh, no! Ah! It looks like the burner was already on, Ow! Steve. Yeah, it hurts. I think we should treat this lightly braised meat mitten with some fresh Rosemary lemon glaze. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that feels better actually, yeah. Oh. <laughs> is it still is it still painful? Because it is. Allow me to prow allow me allow me. Allow me, Steve, to yeah. apply pressure to the wound. Uh. Hey! Hey! Hey, you're fighting there! Hey! You're fighting! Uh. Charles! You're uh. fighting my finger! Uh. You're gonna have to do this thing! Uh. Oh. Oh. Uh. Oh. 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 I'm your host, Charles Bees. See you next week, maybe. <laughs> this has been a cooking channel. Coming up next, her team on the Ritz. <laughs> Mark does a quick, pervy magic trick. Hey, everybody, I'm a pervy magician. Okay, for this. <laughs> Magic trick, I need a beautiful woman volunteer. Oh, here's a volunteer. Okay, come on up here, madam. Okay. Uh, and what's your name, miss? Hi, I'm Jeff Garlock. Jeff Garlock, beautiful woman's name. Okay, so for this, my assistant Juan, Nicolone, and I will be using our magical scarves to make this beautiful woman's uh, undergarments pop out of her clothes. Now, Juan, show everybody that that's not any kind of weird trick scarf. <laughs> okay, Juan, well, great. I'm going to tie these in front of our lady friend here. I'm going to use a square knot. If you were a Boy Scout, you know how to do this. And if you're not, then, well, <laughs> go to magic school or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, now I need everybody in the audience to count to three. One, two, three! Oh! oh. <laughs> You're a very small white bra, man. Oh. Well, look at this, it's broken. Oh man, Jeff Garlock, you are a beautiful lady. I'll oh, see you after the show, so and I'll give you this later. <laughs> Our wedding will be the most unique wedding ever. <laughs> Our wedding will be the most beautiful ceremony in the history of love. Our wedding will stand the test of time as the moment mankind was the most harmonious, most tranquil. Our wedding will be a celebration of love and a funeral for hate. <laughs> Our wedding will be a call to arms, and our weapon, it's love. <laughs> our wedding will have a laser light show that tells the story of how we met, and the story of how we'll die. <laughs> our wedding will be pornographic, but tastefully done. <laughs> our wedding will wampum gangnam style. <laughs> our wedding will send a message to those fat cats in Washington. <laughs> Our wedding will be a social commentary that tackles the truth those pussies that wrote The Wire were too afraid to tackle. Our wedding will scare the fuck out of you. Our wedding will be filmed and available for download on a Korean torrent site 
It'll be their only non bukkake title. <laughs> Our wedding's fight choreographer is being paid in cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> our wedding will be bilingual, and our honeymoon, cunnilingual. <laughs> you know that photo of those obese twins riding motorcycles? <laughs> <laughs> our wedding will have six different types of apple cider to represent the six different men I dated before Linda. <laughs> Our wedding will send a message to those fat cats in Washington. <laughs> Our wedding will be sponsored by Santori. For a relaxing time, make it a Santori time. <laughs> you know that photo of that guy spreading his asshole open like all the way? <laughs> like really open, like you could just pop a golf ball in there? <laughs> He's my maid of honor. <laughs> America no Tanoshimi Motsu Koto de Kiro? Our wedding will be the first time I meet my biological father in person. And the last time. As soon as we're pronounced husband and wife, a state executioner is going to flip the switch on that sick fuck. You know how sometimes you go to a wedding and you can't quite put your finger on it, but just like at a gut level, you know that this was a mistake. <laughs> Our wedding won't be like that. Uh, no, no. Our wedding will be fun. <laughs> Our wedding will be the best day of my life. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very little time to do an impression of scuba diving. and I'm the social media consultant for DiGiorno Pizza. <laughs> Recently, the Ray Rice incident drew national attention to the issue of domestic violence. On September 8th, the Twitter hashtag WhyIStayed started trending to promote awareness about the complexities of abusive relationships. So on 11.11 p.m. that same night, I tweeted from the DiGiorno Pizza account, Hashtag why I stayed, you had pizza. <laughs> so I'm here to formally apologize for this tweet. I'm deeply sorry to those I offended. However, I am so kind of confused about where exactly I went wrong. I'm just a gal. I'm just trying to understand just like everyone else. And when I get upset, I drown my sorrows in cheesy, greasy, fatty pizza. It's my weakness. <laughs> <laughs> Was what I said really that bad? Like, I really don't know, and I feel like a big dumb idiot standing up here. <laughs> I know that um, on September 11th, I tweeted, 13 years later, hashtag never forget to stock up on pizza. <laughs> Terrible. Like, of course, I know what happened on September 11th. That was also awful. But, like, I ran this tweet by everyone at the corporate offices, and we thought we were golden. Like, we're all kind of baffled by this backlash. Question Were people offended when I tweeted, There's no pizza in Syria? Decapitate me now. Hashtag ISIS. Hashtag no fair. Hashtag. <laughs> All the details surrounding ISIS at that time, so I can see how that one was misconstrued. Overall, however, I think we've had kind of a banner year of tweeting. Like, for example, I'm gay for pizza. Hashtag boycott Sochi. Hashtag extra sausage. <laughs> you guys, the Winter Olympics, remember them? Mm. We love Johnny Weir, he was great. <laughs> this was a good one, I thought. We love every topping. We don't discriminate. Hashtag Donald Sterling, hashtag Clippers, hashtag White Pizza. <laughs> or how about 
we want our girls like our pizza at home. <laughs> scary time. <laughs> or this one. Here today, gone tomorrow. Hashtag Malaysia Flight 37. another chance to buy that Tuscan chicken pizza. <laughs> so buy some now, because you might die. Hashtag Ebola. Thanks for that. And now, the writers pitch all their ideas that no one likes all at once. Uh, 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 Alright guys, I uh, just remember to do a better job of cleaning up underneath the stocking section. Uh, but other than that, everyone's doing a great job. I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, uh, one more thing. Uh, corporate installed some cameras just to keep track of what's going on. Uh, there's one right there, one there, and one there. Uh, it's not a big deal. Um, okay, so just everybody get back to work. It's going to get really busy tonight. Um, oh, uh, Ruby, can you hand me the lettuce? Yeah, no problem. No problem. What are you doing? What do you mean? You're moving weird. No, I'm not. You're showing the camera the lettuce. Oh, sorry. The This whole camera thing, is I'm in my head about it a little bit. There's nothing to be in your head about. You're fine. Just do what you always do. Okay. okay. Uh, guy. Guys, what? Okay, what, what are you doing? We are good co-workers and we generate a positive working environment. Is this how you like someone? No, I'm not at work. Stop it, stop it. I'm so sorry. These cameras are making me self-conscious and I'm doubting my every move. Guys, everything is fine. L Laura, stop looking at the camera. You got it. Laura, it looks weird. Stop looking at the camera. What am I supposed to do with my arms? I forgot what I'm supposed to do with my arms. You don't do, you don't do anything with your arms. Just put them down, okay? Put them down. Just be normal. Laura, stop looking at the camera. Laura, I swear to God, stop looking at the fucking camera. I can't stop looking.
definitely got out of hand there. I don't know what we were doing. Uh -huh. Laura kept looking at the cameras. I'm pretty sure you said death to the Jews. Yeah. I did, and I'm Jewish. <laughs> oh, guys, I just got a mail from headquarters. They have definitely been watching us, and they heard everything. Also, the cameras have night vision. <laughs> And they were like, keep it, hold on to that, we'll definitely write it into a sketch. And they did it. And I've been holding this thing in my small New York apartment for a year. And today you get evicted, Dora! Take a quick part of the intermission. That's a good bargain. We'll be back with more modern night.